Okay, everyone. Happy Lag Um I know it's not the time for the shear. Shear should have been Monday night. And now it's uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, I simply was not ready yes, last night for this shear. Um, first of all, let me dedicate to tonight's class. Tonight's class was sponsored by Yaakov and Teferis Kahneman. And this is in honor of their new baby boy that had his bris last week, I think Tuesday. And his name is Moshe Simcha. Moshe Simcha Kahneman. So, what a beautiful name. May the Avers to help you should, both of you should get to raise him in good health. He should grow up a chassid, a yishamayim, and a lamdin, and uh, bring you a lot of pride and a lot of simcha in watching this Moshe Simcha grow up. Um, another dedication was by Mrs. Bunya Newman. This is in honor of her husband's birthday that's going to be tonight, the 19th of Iyar. Um, Shol Zev Ben Frimit. May he have a shnas bracha and atzlacha, a great year. And only, only good. Okay, that being said, I also want to thank others that have donated. Didn't explicitly say they want to sponsor a shear, but I want to mention the Lizak family. Uh, thank you for your donation and much bracha to you. Um, there was someone from British Columbia, and I don't remember the name. Didn't get, so if you're listening, it should be a blessing for you as well. And. Uh, to all others, Sarah Khazanov, and a big mazel tov to her on her engagement to someone by the name of last name is Harrison. Herson. I just don't remember his first name. Much, much, much would be a binyan adayat. Much bracha and mazel and only, only good. Uh, with all this not remembering, okay, when Mashiach will come, as a Hashem fully, there won't be any more any forgetfulness. In any case, I didn't write things down. So I forgot, read them, read them a while ago. Okay, the shear also was not given in its regular time, so it's later than when it was supposed to. And, okay. So now let me explain a little bit what's going on with today's shear. Why I'm giving it now, Lag Boomer in the afternoon. It's being given now because it's about Lag Boomer. And um, it's some stunning, stunning revelations uh, of deep mystical ideas that I'd like to share today. They're stunning to me. I just discovered them. And I've been plowing through them in the last while and trying to capture and understand and uh, hopefully be able to share. Um, but I'm not ready. I'm not at all ready to share this, but I didn't want to wait till later, um, maybe if I took these concepts that I've been reading in the last uh, 36 hours and gone out um, and uh, walked with them and processed them and read the discourses, as I'm going to mention which discourse this is, another two, three times and, and um, assimilated it and understood it, I would feel comfortable giving the class and hopefully it would... Uh, uh, but again, it wouldn't be Lag Boimer, and I didn't want to hold back on that, especially since Lag Boimer is a day of secrets. So I have no idea how this class, I didn't even structure it in my head. I read things, I have like a bunch of concepts and ideas, and I'm just giving it because I'm forced to give it right now. I don't want to wait any longer. It's something that when I read the little pieces and so on and so forth, got me very excited. And it's also very, very much related to the times that we're in right now, and particularly to Lagba Omer this year, as I think the connections could be made. Um, now, so I'm going to make a, an important um, exclaimer. What I am saying tonight, to, to, in today's class is not definite. Um, I am making assumptions based on what I'm reading, and I am... Um, connecting it, okay? 
And you know, there are certain classes that I give and I, can, I feel more confident to be able to say that this is definite. Definite, no, no, no one can be definite in anything. We're, we're only human beings. But from the perspective that I'm in, and from my understanding, I can claim very strongly that this is, you know, at least in, in my head, it's definite. But in this case, it's, it's still, uh, I'm unsure. But I think I'm on to something, even if I, did, I haven't figured it out exactly. And it's regarding the most abstract or probably the most elusive subject in the world. And that is the birthing of Mashiach, which is the secret of secrets. I'm not coming to tell you a date. I am saying that today, Yallah Ba'imer is a very auspicious day for the complete revelation of Mashiach Tzadkenu. And that's another reason <laughs> which already four o'clock in the afternoon and I was hoping that I won't have to give this year because the year would just unfold in front of our eyes uh, without me having to speak about it and then we would just have it in reality whether we understand why or why not today is a day for Mashiach to come uh, that would have been much better than me struggling trying to explain the unexplainable um, but one of the reasons I'm giving this year is maybe to trigger it Let's, 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 let's make it happen. Okay, so let me tell you where the germ of this all came about. And therefore, I have no idea how long the share is going to be. I don't even know. Again, I have no idea if I'm going to be successful in capturing the, 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 this, 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 first of all, this very lofty concept and capturing it in words because I didn't yet organize it and structure it enough. And um, if I'm going to be able to uh, be successful in delivering it, so I don't know. I pray and I hope that we're going to be able to, that something good is going to come out by the time we're done. And it's going to become clear to me and clear to whoever is listening. And even more than that, not only, like you say in Yiddish, from dein moil to God's oyerin, from our mouths to God's ears. I'm saying the best day for Mashiach to come according to the Torah is today. You know, they once asked the mayor of Premishlan. The mayor of Premishlan was a great Hasidic Rebbe, that whenever he wanted to give a bracha and so on and so forth, um, he would always, you know, camouflage his blessings. He was a miracle worker, incredible miracle worker. And he would camouflage his, his, his blessings in, in, in verses, in psukim in the Torah. And sometimes they were pretty far-fetched, that that's the meaning of the verse, but he would somehow fit it in. And they asked him, like, why do you do that? I mean, if you obviously you have a power to give a blessing, you have a power to make a miracle, so just say the miracle as it is. So in his humility and so on and so forth, obviously the power for a tzaddik to make a miracle is because he's attached to Hashem and attached to God. And that's how he can provide a miracle. So he would say, you know, when you, when you need to tell your father that he needs to do something a little different, which is our case with God. God is our Father, and we see certain things that seem to be wrong, at least in our eyes, and that's why we run to the tzaddik and we say, this person should be well, why are they sick? And we hopefully the tzaddik will correct it. So what is the tzaddik going to correct? God runs the world, not the tzaddik. The answer is the tzaddik is plugged into God, and he can you know, rearrange things. So it's like a child having to tell his father, you got to do it another way. But it's disrespectful. In laws of kibbut of aim, you're not allowed to tell your father you got it wrong. The way to do it is you take out a safer and you say, let's learn, you know, I, I, oh, I read this, what do you think about it? So then he reads it, and like, like, like the halach is, you say, Kach this, is, this is what it says in the Torah, and let him figure out already that, oh, it says in the Torah so. So it's the same with Hashem. We tell him, this is what says in the Torah. If this is what says in the Torah, then Hashem ought to listen. So I'm going to say this year, and I'm saying to Hashem, this is what it says in the Torah. And this is what it says in the Torah, therefore Hashem ought to listen. I'm no Rameer per Mishlan, I'm no big tzaddik, I'm just a regular guy. But we're living in the world where, right before Mashiach comes, where hopefully regular people have more power because the tzaddikim, we don't know where they are. Um, at least physically. So we all can take and be a little ambitious. Okay. The germ of this idea was sent to me by Rabbi Groner, uh, from Australia, Reb Chaim Tzvi Groner, who sent me a, um, a, a WhatsApp message, and then he sent it to me in an email, 
Um, he took a picture from a book, from a Murray Admar Azok and Tov Kuf Samaches. And he asked me if I'm, he sent it to me last week. He said, are you familiar with this? So when I managed to finally get around and take a look at the Sefer and open it up, um, I got very excited. It's really, really phenomenal stuff. There is a very clear statement over here of Lag Ba'omer having to do with Mashiach. Not only with Lag Ba'omer connected to Mashiach, but Lag Ba'omer um, as the conclusion of Mashiach supposed to come on Pesach. Now, I'm still suffering. <laughs> I'm sorry for being just honest with everybody. I'm still suffering from Mashiach not having come this Pesach. I mean, you know, everything is so ready. The world is, Hashem already stopped the whole world. If he needed to stop the whole world, he made sure we're all sitting by our seders alone, similar to the, to the first time. And, and the stage is set. And yet Mashiach did not come. So I'm still trying to comfort myself and my listenership that so far we haven't seen it. Although I don't, chas v'shalom, for one second, believe that um, we missed the boat and it's not happening. There's no turning back. We're now on the road to Mashiach. It's just the question is, how long is God going to tease us? How long is he going to, you know, like uh, pull this out? And why can't he already finally give us the prize? What's really interesting is that in this mimer, the Altus is on. I'll tell you where it is. You can look it up in two places. It's based on a passage of Zohar in Parshas Bolok. I got the Zohar over here. The Zohar is in Parshas Bolok, Taf. Reish Gimel Amid Beis. That's what I think. Reish Gimel, I'll tell you in a second. And Parshas Bolok. Yeah, Reish Gimel Amid Beis. That's where it is in Zayar. The Mimer in in Tov Kuf Samaches. This is the new print of Tov Kuf Samaches is on page Reish Pei Gimel. That's not, that's the part that I'm referring to. The Mimer really begins in, on page Reish Samach Tes. It starts with the word Zoyar Pashas Balak. And it's also printed in Biure HaZoyar on Pashas Balak. So um, it's a long discourse. It's like the, the, the Mittler Rebbe style, long. He's telling, he's, he's, he's writing elaborately on his father's mimer. He's the Kaysev, the one who wrote it down. And it's a good day. The Mittler Rebbe is very deeply connected to Lag Boimer. He had the same kind of a stalkus like the like Rosh B. And uh, we know that the Mittler Rebbe was on Lag Boimer. Was, people were helped with him. Miracles were flowing, especially when it coming to children. So all those who need a bracha for children should be able to have a bracha for children today. Um, okay. So let me then tell you what he says over here, which got me excited. And I read this and I was excited. Then I said to me to understand it, I need to learn the whole mimer. So I sat down two, two days ago and I started it. No, I started just yesterday. Actually, yesterday in the morning I started it. And it was like, it blew my mind. I, I, it, it's such amazing, amazing. It's not an easy discourse. It's, 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 it's pretty, pretty challenging. Um, and again, I, I, can use, I can use this, I can use learning this another couple of times till I feel comfortable teaching it. But here we go. This is the raw, unfiltered version. I'm obviously just going to take a few points from the discourse. But what, let, let, let me share with you the part that initially triggered. So he's talking over here about um, the, the time when Mashiach is supposed to come. Uh, the, there's a pasuk in Parshas Bolok where it says, Kimeroish Tzurim Arenu, from the tops of mountains, I see him. This is who talking? This is Bilam. And Bilam is saying, when he's talking about the Jewish people and why they're uncursable, okay, he's telling it to Balak, why the Jewish people, are, he can't curse them. He says, because they are, 
They have very strong foundations. From the tops of mountains, Arenu I see him. And from hilltops, Ashirenu I gaze upon him. Um, the Alter Rebbe's interpretation of the word Gevois seems like from the discourse is not hills but from valleys. Um, that's interesting. I, when, I was a, when I was young, I always thought that that's the meaning. Uh, harem is, I always, I, that was my, my thought, that the way I, 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 I would read it always. A, a, a harem, harem are mountains, and Gevois are canyons. But if you look in most of the Mepharshim, or most, at least, uh, the, uh, is Gavais are hills. But in, in, in this discourse, he seems to be reading that Gavais means valleys. And I'll share with that to, with you a little later. And um, so he says, I see them strongly settled. So on the words Gavais Ashirenu, he brings an argument, the Zohar, this is the Zohar, where the Zohar says, the word Gevaois, do you spell it with a Vav in it? And then it would mean hills or valleys more than one? Or do you read Gevaois, or do you read Gevaois without a Vav? Or me give us, that's how you would read it. And that would mean from one valley. So from many valleys or only one? So who is the argument between? So obviously this is Rav Shimon Yochai talking, so he can tell you like who's arguing. This is an arguing uh, 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 in the two academies above. One is called Mesifta Ilah, the higher academy. And then the other one is called Mesifta Derakia, the Mesifta of the firmament. That's the lower academy. So in the Masifta de Rekia, it reads it with a vav. It says you're supposed to read it with a vav. And in the Masifta Ilah, on the higher academy, which is higher than the firmament, over there they say Gavais without a vav. Give us. The difference would be, is it, there's more than one difference, but just for now, one or many. So when it says that in Masifta de Rekia, it's referring to Gevois with a vav, implying plural, more than one. So it says, um, because um, the vav is needed there, the ashlim latrain sitrin. It is needed for two reasons, for two, two sides. Chadahai givas lo yisparshem ebrod la'almen. One is because this valley, this giva or hill, whatever you're going to say, doesn't separate herself from her son. And her son is a vav, we're soon going to see. The vav is considered the son. So the valley is the mother, and the, and the vav is the son. So you got to keep the vav in the giva, because mother and son don't separate. She never leaves him alone. La'olam. That's why the vav is always there. The chad and the other one, the ha give it the latatas, because we're talking about another level of mother, another level of valley. That's why, by the way, I mentioned before um, that in this mimer it seems to say that that givois are valleys, because he's talk, he, he I'm just going to give a short little something, because um, male and female. So male is called mountain and female is called valley. Male is called mountain because the male is a mashpia. A mashpia means projection. You project out, just like a mountain is an outward projection. Female is a recipient. And a recipient means a klikibul. A klikibul means a space to receive. And that's the idea of the valley, that's a space. That's why giva which is referring to the Makabel, the recipient. So therefore, father and mother, mother is called the valley. But we know spiritually, I mean, those that are listening to this class, hopefully have learned a little bit mystical ideas. There's two levels of Nekeva. There's two levels of mother. There's the lower mother, which is Malchus, and there is the higher mother, which is, um, which is Bina. Okay, two levels. 
So when it says, if we read the word giva ois with a vav, implying two hills or two valleys, it's the higher valley and the lower valley. It's Bina and Malchus. So the first idea that we said that the Vav is always together with his mother is Bina and her son, the Vav. And the second one, the Zayar says, is the Hagiva de Latata. What does that mean? Which is referring to Malchus. Bra de Iskalil Baba, the mother, the, the, son, the son that is included in her, Itzrich Lezimne de Ase, is going to need. This giva is going to need not only, in other words, the vav, there's another vav over here, a, vav, a son connected to his mother, but this is not the son of Bina, this is the son of Malchus, connected to his mother, and he's going to need not only his mother, but he's going to need to connect to Bina as well, to what let's call it the grandmother. He's going to have to connect to, to Bina as well. When is that going to be necessary? Kad yesei Malka Meshicha. When Malka Mashiach, when King Mashiach is going to need Lenatla Le give us law. When, no, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Kadye say Malka Mashiach, when Mashiach is going to come. Okay? So then Lenatla Le give us law. Then the higher valley, not his mother, the mother of his mother, his grandmother, is going to lift him up and she's going to take him into herself. That means Mashiach is going to rise up into Bina. This is an important idea. By the way, I'm giving an introduction. This class is going to be super mystical. It fits for Lag Boimer. If this is too much for you and you're afraid you're going to have a Shvir Sakeda, a shattering of the vessels, uh, then don't listen. Okay, so <laughs> let me put it this way. Listen at your own risk. Okay, I took a risk by even reading this stuff. So I'm going to allow you also to take, if you're, if you're comfortable, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make you sign a waiver, but that's what I would do, because just sign a waiver, I'm not responsible, listen on your own risk, uh, and uh, see if, you, if, if, you can make, if it makes sense to you what, what we're teaching, right? And if not, obviously the problem is in us, not in the teachings. In any case, she's going to pick up Mashiach into her wings, Begin in order in order to be able to have him go out. In other words, in order for Mashiach to be able to exit, we're soon gonna make hopefully some heads and tails out of all this. In order for Mashiach to be able to go out, and which means part of Mashiach's revelation, um, he's gonna have to first be lifted up into Bina. And Bina is going to give to him what? And she is going to give him Chayani Lon, supernal life. Malchus, he, who gives life to her child? The mother. The mother is imbuing life into her baby. She's nursing her baby. She's giving, she, she feeds a baby while the baby, the fetus is still within the mother. And then after the mother, after the child is born, the child is clings to the mother. He gets all of his life from his mom. And she takes care of him when he's young. She, she puts him on his feet. But that's called the lower life. And that's not what Mashiach needs. Mashiach needs an infusement of, an, it needs to be infused with life, of supernal life, which is life coming from Bina. And from her, through Malchus, through, in other words, it, Mashiach is going to be born from Malchus, from the Shekhinah, from the lower, lower female, if you can say. But the power behind it is going to be Bina, the grandmother, Bina Yilah, is going, to, is going to give him life. And this is the secret of where it says, I'm going to skip a little bit, um, because we're going to come back to this Pasuk, we're going to see it soon. Um, on that day, Mamish. We'll see which day this is, that's why it's exciting. Yopiklei, Ahu Choyk, Mitchais Katfa, Malchus is going to release Mashiach's Neshama. That means the birth, the baby is going to be born from under her wings. But she's going to be having Bekama Chayin, she's going to have many powers of power of life. Bekama Itrun with many crowns. Bekama Burchan with many blessings. Kedekoya is the way it, it should be. Okay. Then it says, Vahu Chayk. And this, the word Chayk, we'll see what this means soon. Lo Yishtar Bel will not be alone. We'll soon see this is referring to Mashiach. Yiskalal be Mashiach Achra. After he's born, this is important, 
after he's born, he's going to be included in another Mashiach. Another Mashiach is going to be included in him. Bredi Yosef. That's a concept that we've known, the concept called Mashiach ben Yosef. So Mashiach ben Yosef is going to be now absorbed in Mashiach ben David. There's going to be a chibur between the two Mashiachim. Mashiach ben Yosef is going to be now absorbed in Mashiach ben, Yo- in ben David. The Tamon yit, 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 tot, yis tokaf. And over there he's going to become strong. V'loi basar achwe, not in another place. Okay, hold this idea. Again, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you're doing well. The, 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 this is not to meant, at least at this point of the class, to be understood. I'm just laying out the basics over here, the, the, the pieces of the Zohar, the passage. We'll begin the Iyo Givetata the Lesbichayim. And since Moshiach is coming out from the lower valley, which doesn't have any life, now we can't say that Malchus doesn't have any life. She doesn't have any life of her own that we always know, the moon. Malchus compared to the moon doesn't have any life on its own. But Malchus does have life. If she wouldn't have any life, she couldn't have a baby. She has to have life. But at this moment, right at the birth of Mashiach, we're soon going to see, Malchus, her, the mother, is in a lifeless state. We'll see what that means in a few moments. That Malchus, the mother of Mashiach, is, is in a state without life. That's why after Mashiach is born, this is at the time of its birth, after it's born. And it seems like after, or maybe because of, at that time he's going to be included with Mashiach ben Yosef. Yomis Mashiach da v'yiskato. This Mashiach will die and he will be killed. Whoa, heavy stuff. miss and he's going to remain um, non-alive. Until the lower valley is going to receive life. She's going to collect life from the higher valley. Malchus is going to re, reabsorb life. But this time from a much higher place, from her mother, Malchus, the mother of Mashiach, the Shechina, as we're going to see, is going to be absorbed, like we said earlier, that Mashiach is going to be elevated up into Bina. In this case, and it might happen two times, I'm not clear in this. One is before the birth. In order for Mashiach to be born, as we're soon going to see, Bina needs to give life to Malchus. And only through Bina giving life to Malchus can there be the birth of Mashiach Tzedkeinu. But afterwards, seems to be a certain, again, a disconnect which causes a a passing in Moshiach. And then when she receives new life, then v'yakum, Moshiach gets up again. Okay, that's what it says over here. It says the Alter Rebbe in the Maimer. He says, he brings this idea of Ahu Chok, we said before, Okay, fine. Piddish. Because what's interesting is, the world knows, this is a common theme, and a lot of, and a lot of I've heard many, you know, people who talk about Mashiach, everybody's always talking about this. There's Mashiach ben Yosef, there's Mashiach ben David. And it's interesting, in Chabad Chasidus, there's not a lot of discussion about Mashiach ben Yosef and the whole dying of Mashiach ben Yosef and that whole drama that he dies and all that is very hidden, it's very camouflaged because the Gemara says about that that Mashiach ben Yosef dies and Mashiach ben David doesn't die and Mashiach ben David is actually afraid that he will die so Mashiach ben Yosef begs Hashem and he says when he sees Mashiach ben Yosef died, he, 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 he davens to Hashem, as the Pasuk says, it says, the Mar says, Masech Tesukah, Chaim Shalom Chai, ask the Ebershter for life, because God says to Mashiach, ask for me something, I'm giving birth to you, ask for me, Shalom or give me, give me anything you want, and he says, I'm asking you only for life. So but Pashtis, from the regular story, it seems like that Mashiach ben Yosef passes away, Mashiach ben David doesn't. But over here in this mimer, 
It seems to say different. It says, Achra leidnas Mashiach de David, oid yuchlo ba behela Mashiach ben Yosef. So first of all, that this idea that Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David converge to become one person. This is a very interesting idea. That Mashiach ben Yosef, his neshama, his power, becomes absorbed in Mashiach ben David. But he says, Hear this. Because Malchus loses the powerful lights from Bina that up to the birth were still inside Malchus. Malchus was receiving higher life from Bina, as we're soon going to, again, don't get scared from all this. Malchus was receiving a higher infusion of life from Bina at the honest. But at the time of birth, that life goes away. And here he says an interesting thing. This is an idea that when the mother is giving birth, I guess the trauma and the intensity of the birth causes the, her, her thighs to become cool, meaning it, it loses its heat, which means it loses its life force. At the birth, because of the lade, at the time of the birth, her, her legs, her thighs go cold. And that means there is a lifeless state. And these are, now these power in her thighs, now I have to understand, again I'm going to say this, I don't have to say this really every year, but just that we don't understand these in coarseness. We have to realize that we're dealing with abstract of abstract of abstract. So even though we're using physical terms, but just like there is a physical birth, which is mimicking and reflecting the spiritual birthing, and over here in our case, a divine birthing that's taking place in the highest levels of existence. And this is called the higher lives. The higher life is now interrupted, which is the life force of Mashiach. Al Ken Yamos, he's going to die, which is a chiddush, which over here you have a clear source that there could be a passing in Mashiach himself. Until he's going to collect supernal life of Bina in Malchus and via Malchus into the, into the Shechina. And here's where the Alter Rebbe adds already something that is, that is not stated openly in the Zayar. This is what got me excited. Because this is something that happens after the birth. Through the 33 days that the woman, her blood is considered pure. This is, goes back to Parshas Tazriah, which we read two weeks ago. And in Parshas Tazriah it says that when a woman gives birth to a boy, there is the laws of the afterbirth. The afterbirth is that for 33 days, her her, her blood flow is, first there are seven days that she's defiled, but after the seven days, there's 33 days in which the blood that flows from her is considered non, non, uh, it's not contaminating in the spiritual, usually a woman's d discharge of blood causes a, a spiritual defilement, a tumor. But in this case, she's not tummy. And um, she would be allowed to have relations with her husband and so on and so forth. She's not, there's no nida during those 33 days. Now those 33 days are called the completion of her childbirth. That's why they're called yam, Yamei Malois, the days of the filling, Yamei Tahara. So it's still an extension. Now really we're talking about that when are those 33 days over 40, at the 40th day of her birth because it's first seven days of automatic defilement. And then from day number eight until day number 40, which is 33 days, that's when she's, this is this purification time, the Mei Tahara. All right, but it's interesting, we'll see in a moment that in this Cheshben over here, the Alt Rebbe ignores the first seven days. He says the 33 days is the, what's the content of the 33 days? This is the time that she's replenishing her life. The mother whose feet became cold, and therefore lost the higher life. The Shechina, Malchus, lost that higher life, which is the consequence of that causing Mashiach to be lifeless. Mashiach ben David to be lifeless. Now at the end of these 33 days, she reclaims that life, and she brings Chayen Ilan, the higher life, and through that, Mashiach is resurrected. Comes back to life. 
This is the idea of Lag Ba'omer. That's all he says. This is Lag Ba'omer. 33 days after Pesach. So you have to say that birth takes place in Pesach. The Dalai Lama, and it is enough to those who understand. The Alter Rebbe is keeping this cryptic. Lefi, and he says like this. Lefi she yoyim alef the Pesach, because the first day of Pesach, who yoyim the Tishabov. This is the same day of Tishabov. We know that there is a system called At Bash. At Bash is that you connect the first day letter of the Aleph Beis and the last day, and the last letter of the Aleph Beis. They interchange, interchangeable. So Aleph switches with the Tuf, and Beis switches with the Shin, and Gimel switches with so, and with the Resh. But and we know that there is a system in our calendar that is um, indicated in this At Bash. And one of the things are that Aleph is the first day of Pesach, will always, will exchange with Tuf. That means whichever day the first day of Pesach it was, in this case, our year, Pesach fell out on a Wednesday night, it was three days Yom Tev, right? So Thursday was the first day. So Tisha B'av will always also fall out on a Thursday. This coming Tisha B'av, which hopefully is going to be the big, big Yom Tev already, is going to happen on, is going to be on a Thursday. Aleph Tisha B'av. Now, it, in Torah, there's no randomness. Oh, it just happens to be the calendar works that way. There are deep secrets. And we know also that our Seder plate, we, 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 we have an egg, and we dip it in salt water. And we eat it in the beginning of the meal. And the minog, it relates to, because an avel, a mourner, uh, his first meal, his or her first meal is an egg. And why do we have Pesach by night morning? Because we're connecting somehow to Tisha B'av. Now Pesach, why are we thinking about Tisha B'av? So now we know the deeper secret. It's not because we want to c- connect to the sadness of Tisha B'av, but we know the real secret of Tisha B'av. What's the real secret of Tisha B'av? Moshiach is born. Moshiach is born on Tisha B'av. That's what the sages say. That birthday of Moshiach is on Tisha B'av. But what does it really mean, since the first day of Pesach and Tisha B'av are intrinsically connected, that there is a birthing of Moshiach on the first day of Pesach? Aleph the Pesach who yoyim the Tisha B'av sheboy noyle the Mashiach. That's when Mashiach is born. But what happens after Mashiach's birth? There is a histalkus of Chayim. There is a there is an, an absence of life. It's a lag boimer. So how about it takes thirty three days? Now during these thirty three days, the lag boimer soif lamet gimel the meitahara. This is the end of the thirty three days of the de- meitahara. And therefore, now there is already Chayan Elon transmitted the supernal life from Bina into Malchus, and it, it's the completion of the birth. And there it says, I will convert their sadness to joy. The Abishta says, I will convert their mourning which can be understood now in a few things. It can be, I will convert Tisha B'av, which is a day of mourning, glosasim for joy. That's the one. It can also mean, related to what we just said, that Moshiach comes back to life. Because this the departure of Moshiach is the biggest pain that there is in the world. And obviously we know the state of Hasidim and the state of the darkness after Gimel Tamas and all of this stuff. We can appreciate that this is just the, 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 the sorrow that never goes away. It's a pain that just can never be... Uh, for those who have already seen messianic light shining in their soul, whoever has been or seen it, and the fact that it's been hidden, is, and that should be converted to, to happiness. Oh, but when is that? And we're going to see soon. <laughs> I'm thinking it's related to our time that we're in right now as well, because we were expecting when birth to happen the first night of Pesach. This year we were expecting the birth to happen the first night of Pesach. And who says it didn't happen? Based on what we're learning now, it could have happened. Not only it could have, maybe it did. And now maybe it, hopefully it, for sure, did on some... You see... As I'm going to continue, and as we're going to learn this, we'll see that these things happen on many layers and on many levels. It's not, not, not one. Again, this is my assumption. And if you want to argue with me and give your own shot, um, this is just my understanding from, from what I got to. 
Anyways, why does it have Lag Ba'omer with the complete revelation of Mashiach? The Yolula de Rishbi. And that's why it's, it's the Hilul, it's the yard site of Reb Shemim Bayuchai, which means it's the yard site, the way people usually understand is the tzaddik went away, istalkus. But we know the real meaning of istalkus is not departure. It means a greater present and a greater present because at the tzaddik, at the day, at the time of his passing, his entire energy, his entire power shines forth. So the energy of the tzaddik is fully present much more than any other time in his life. And, the, and it repeats itself every year afterwards. So the energy of Rajbi is like present in the world. Why? Because Rajbi is Nitzutz of Moshe. Who's Rajbi? Shimon Ba Yochai. Shimon Ba Yochai is a spark of Moshe. And who's Moshe? Moshe is the Redeemer. Not just the first Redeemer, but the last Redeemer, as we know, the Medrash says, he's Mashiach. Spiritually Mashiach, as we discussed so many times. Not physically, he can't be physically Mashiach because he's from Shevet Levi, but spiritually he's Mashiach. Shubchanis Mashiach, Kamashkash Lachnov, and Goyal Rishan, and Mashiach Goyal Achron, Kiyadua. Ah, so Lag Boimer, we have the complete manifestation of Mashiach in the world. That's why when I read this last week, when I picked it, I said, wow, Lag Boimer is coming. In the Mimer, there is a clear indication that the completion of what we didn't have on, Lag, on, on Pesach is being completed now. Now, to further support this, someone sent me actually a week before that, two weeks ago, I think, or something like a couple of days before I received it from Rabbi Groner, this mimer, he sent me in a, a passage from the Tzvila Tzadik, who is the <clears throat> grandson of the Bnei Yisoscher, the grandfather of the Bluzhever. He's the first Bluzhever Rebbe. He was a great Tzadik that I knew in New York, and I learned in his yeshiva, Rabbi Yisrael of Bluzhev, for those who read Hasidic tales of the Holocaust, and you can see unbelievable stories um, most of it is about the, the Blue Jever Rebbe. So his grandfather is the Tzvila Tzadik. He was known to be an incredible, incredible big mystic and Tzadik. Um, and for those who follow a little Hasidic, the, the Toldis Aaron Hasidim, the, the Rabbi Aralech of Yerushalayim, I was at a real super uh, from Hasidim of Meisha Arim of Yerushalayim. Uh, Rabbi Aral, they're all the students of Rabbi Aaron, of R Rabbi Aaron wrote, now, Rabbi Aaron Roth was not a Rebbe. He didn't come from a, from a dynasty of Rebbes. He himself was a self-made Rebbe. He was a student of the Tzvilat Tzadik of the Blue Jiver. Just giving you a little bit of Hasidic uh, background. And that's where you got this whole Toldus Aaron, which is, you know, a big influence, if we can say, in the Hasidic world. Anyways, the Blue Jiver says that Kenire, that on Lag Boimer, is going to be his Galus Mashiach. And it's the same Tzvi Latzadik who also says, interesting, that um, Pesach is the word Pesach, it says in Arizal. Pesach is Pesach. Samach means the mouth talks. Sach Malash is Sicha. Talking, it's just not with the shin, it's with a Samach. Pesach. But instead of it being Pei, you make the word pay if you spell it out with the miloi, it's pay hey. Pay hey, sach, the mouth speaks. We understand that's what Mashiach is. Mashiach is God's power of malchus, of speech, as we're going to see it in this discussion as well. Sach is speaking, it's his galos, it's revealing itself. So he says that it's, there's a remez over here for tafshin pay, for this year, and he said it back then. Because he says pay hey, 85 times 68 samaches is gematria 5778, 5780. Sorry, not 5778, 5780, 5780. And then he says lag boimer. So it, it, it fits really well with the altar Reb over here. There's a 33 period for the birthing to complete of Mashiach's neshama in the world. So whether we're going to hear and see Mashiach Tzedkein or B'Poyal Mamish today, I believe today is a powerful Mashiach advancement. Again, I'm hoping and I'm waiting. God can still pull it off. And if I have to say, like, like the Rameir Pramishlan, Father so says in the Torah, I'm not saying my own, I'm just pointing to you what it says over here. So I hope we can ask Hashem to get the show on the road because Lag Bo'emir is already slowly departing. 
But let's hope that uh, we'll still see the Geula today. Okay. This is the, the essence of the teaching. Now what does this all mean? What does it mean that Malchus gives birth, she loses her life? Now it's interesting. I, I was trying to get more, a little bit more of a grip in the 33 days. And the mimer doesn't say anything. And even in the explanation, even when I learned the entire mimer, which really elaborates on a lot of the concepts and gives you a, bit, a, bit, a better background to understand what's going on, this idea of the 33 days being some kind of a, uh, a, a uh, hefsek or some kind of a just, um, what would be a good word for it? I'm not sure. Um, some kind of a, a period of, of um, preparation from the birth of Mashiach to the revelation of Mashiach. Um, I also found, I was looking and I found it in the Tzemach Tzedek, in Oyer Atayra, in, 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 in Parsh, in, in Vayikra. He says over there, Oh, it, 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 it fits very Yishmach, because the Tzemach Tzedek says, again, he said over here that Mashiach is born, and then he passes, and then he, he passes away, Yomuz, and then he reveals. So the Tzemach Tzedek asks, unrelated, he says, I don't understand, it says, Isha says, Ria, a woman will give birth, the Yolda Zach, a woman will become pregnant, and she will give birth to a son. And the rules regarding to that birth is that first she's tame. There is a seven-day period of tuma, and then suddenly, not only is she not tame, but she is immune to defilement. She has a thirty-three-day period where even when she has blood, she's not tame. So how does it work? So he explains it as part of the messianic process. And he says that the Isha, the woman that's giving birth, the Yolda Zachar, the one that's being born over here, that's Mashiach Tzedkenu. As it says in the Erechaim HaKadosh, the Erechaim says that the male that it's talking about will be born is that Neshama that we've been waiting for all the years. It's, the, it's that baby boy we've been waiting, Mashiach Tzedkenu. The Yolda Zachar that he gives birth, that's, that's Mashiach. And what's the Tumah that comes? For seven days there's Tumah. He, he relates that period of seven days he brings the Medrash, Ki do as we know regarding Mashiach, that Mashiach will reveal himself, then he will be hidden, and then he will reveal himself again. So he says the concealment of Mashiach is some kind related to the defilement that happens after the birth. That's the blocking of Mashiach that happens after Mashiach is revealed. The blocking of Mashiach's light that happens after Mashiach is revealed. And the 33 days that's coming afterwards is a tikkun on that kisoy, on that concealment. In other words, it's here to take Mashiach out from his concealed state back into the revealed. Because that's what the Medrash says. He's going to be revealed, concealed, and, and, be, and, and be revealed. And from here it's mashma, from the Alter Rebbe's mimer, his grandfather's mimer, it's mashma, that the concealment of Mashiach is, is, has to do with, the, with, the, with what we said before, with the... With the um, lack of life that is in the Shechina, in his mother, where there is a, 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 a diminishment of life. Like he said earlier, the thighs get cold. And then the 33 days is to reattach the life from Bina back into Malchus to infuse new life into Mashiach, which is the Chayan Ilan, the supernal life, which will allow Mashiach Tzedkenu to finish his job. And that's the reappearance of Mashiach related to Lag Boimer. And again, in the Tzemach Tzedek doesn't connect it to the to, 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 to Lag Boimer. That I have over here in the Alter Rebbe's mind. The Tzemach Tzedek, however, connects that same process to, to the idea of Mashiach's birth, the Yol de Zachar, the boy that we're talking about is Mashiach, and that there is an Indian of Misa there. He doesn't say Misa, but he says Kisoi, a concealment, and then a return. So there's a deep secret over here regarding Mashiach. Now, one other thing which I, I, I want to notice, which I want to make note over here, is that it says that Moshiach is revealed. And the Zoyar says that after Moshiach is born, 
there is an eskashros, a bonding between Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. And then after that, the, the Zoyar talks about the passing, because it's a place, it's in Malchus, and in Malchus there's no life, as we explained earlier, because of the departure. That's why there is a death. And again, as I told you earlier, most of the Mepharshim, and I saw other Mepharshim, learn that it's Mashiach ben Yosef that dies. But the, the question is, what does it mean Mashiach ben Yosef dies? Isn't Mashiach ben Yosef now Mashiach ben David already attached? The Zoyar says clearly, Yeskal will be, he will be included. But the Alter Rebbe says, no, that that death relates to Mashiach ben David as well. That's how he learns it. Now we can say that because of his eschalos with Mashiach ben Yosef, that relates to it. Because really in Mashiach ben David, there shouldn't be a death. But because of his eschalos with Mashiach ben Yosef, again, we can speculate. There is chas v'shalom and inyan of hapachachayim, the opposite of life. And after that, there is the 33 days, that intention of the 33 days, which concludes on Lag Boimer, of the rebirthing and the, the, the final complete establishment firmly of Mashiach Tzadkenu in this world. Now, let's understand something. Is all of this taking place between one Pesach and one Lag Boimer? Or are we dealing with spans of time that could be over a long period of time? I think both are true. I think there are certain developments that are on a greater scale. And so as I mentioned earlier, I believe something could have happened this year, this year, Pesach. Something could have, something mighty could have happened this year, Pesach. And um, the Lag Boimer uh, is the completion of it. But what I would like to do now is just add, before I go into the deeper understanding over here, just in case you're going to lose your patience to try to get the rest of the whole shear and try to follow it all along. So um, I would just like to add my interpretation of how this is playing out a little bit in the revelation of Mashiach in the world. It's no secret that I believe that the Lubavitcher Rebbe is Mashiach. I have mentioned that. Uh, I used to be more shy about it. I always believed it in my heart. But I used to, I didn't have any grasp and understanding in its process and so on and so forth. I've become more and more and more and more convinced about this the more I learned and the more I delved into the subject and it's clearer to me. Um, people always ask the question, and that the case, then who is, because he's the only one who fits, bottom line, he's the only one who fits the Rambam, the description of what, and a Rambam is halacha, of how the Moshiach unfolds in the world. The only one that fits the description. The only one who comes close to it. To fulfilling what Rambam says. That the king is going to rise. He's going to uh, reach out to the Jewish people. Bring them to, to, to a mitzvah observance. He's going to be a huge Talmud Chacham. He's going to affect the nations. I mean, only, the only one. There's just no one else in, in that, that fits that, 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 that thing. We're going to see in, in, in our discussion further that Moshiach Tzedkenu is who? Who is Moshiach? Mashiach is not some individual. Mashiach is the deepest point of our souls. Mashiach is the pnimius of the Jewish neshamas, of Nishmas Yisrael. He is the inner point of our souls. The inside of our souls, that's Mashiach. The Nekudah pnimius, as we know, our neshamas have various different dimensions. Nefesh, Ruch, Nesham, Achai, So Mashiach is the deepest point of our soul. When we say Mashiach needs to be born, what does that mean? It means that we need to be born. We as the Jewish people need to be born. That means even though we're already here, our souls are already in this world, we're physically here, we're spiritually here, but we're not, we're spiritually, but we're not spiritually here. We're living on the surface of our being. Our deeper selves has not, has not been born, meaning it hasn't come out, hasn't come out with degiloi. Moshiach Tzedkenu, when he's going to reveal himself, Begashmi is, that's going to bring a powerful surge and upgrade of spirituality to all of us. We're going to be functioning on a level way, way beyond. Once you want to appreciate that idea that Moshiach is the pnimius of Nishmas Yisrael, so then from a much deeper place, forget about Rambam and Halacha discussion. Halacha is very important, but Halacha means you're looking at it from the outside. You're looking from the outside, this, you're working from your out. Halacha deals with the What's halacha? Halacha deals with the practical side of things. So it's dealing with the, with the final deed. But bef, be, beyond the final deed are the essential components that, that, that lead to the final conduct, which is just the, the outer. Right? 
So there's two ways of examining things. You can learn Pnimiya Satori, you can learn Hasidus and see things from the inner core, or you can learn Halacha and then you can see things from the outside. And when the two converge from the inside and the outside, then you usually know you're up to something, that it's right. So the, 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 when you want to look, look, you want to look at what did the Lubavitcher Rebbe do, then you look at what Rambam says Mashiach needs to do. That's not who Mashiach is, it's what he needs to do, his actions. We can only judge, we're looking at something from the outside. So we can, we can judge these activities and say, oh, he fits the bill. And, and the same is, you can look at the Rebbe and you can look at his actions. But when you, when you learn Hasidus, and you learn, and especially when you learn quite a lot of Hasidus, and you get familiar with the concepts, and you understand these concepts, I mean, to the best that we're able to understand divinity and godly ideas, and then you get to know the mohus of things, the, su- the substance of it. So you get to know the substance of what Mashiach is all about. And when you have a Rebbe, and you study him, and so on and so forth, you get to know the substance of this person. So when you're looking at the whole concept of Mashiach from the pinimiest, the deepest inner point, and you say Mashiach is, is not some outsider, Mashiach is me, but my inner pinimi is my deepest point. So you have to find the tzaddik who is the root, who is the nerve center of the Jewish people. And that too, there's only one. That because there are a lot of great tzaddikim that help Jews, that help people. But to have one tzaddik, one person, who feels the pain and the cares for every single person across the world, the entire globe. And our generation, I can't say that, that I'm not going to say that in all generations, only one. I'm sure the Baal felt all the Jews as well. And so on and so forth. But in our generation, it's the Rebbe. He's the only one who, who, and how do you know, maybe another tzaddik also felt. He's the only one we have proof that felt. Every single Jew across the whole world. What's the proof? The proof is that he sent out his emissaries and spent 40 years, his entire life, reaching to every Jew. So from his actions, you can judge his essence. It's because he couldn't sleep when there was a, when there was a problem, when a yid, in, a girl in Alaska uh, was lacking in her Judaism. That disturbed the Rebbe's peace. And the same as a young, young man in New Zealand or a lost soul in Brazil. He, he sensed the entire world. That's because he's Pneumius Nishmas Yisrael, feels the pain of every Jew and every Yid. As we're soon going to see, that's why also Mashiach suffers the worst pain. Because he suffers, the, because as the Jewish people are in exile, and he's the Pneumius of the Jewish people, so he suffers their, their, he agonizes and experiences their experience, experiences exponentially more than they experience it. Because in the Pneumius, everything is amplified. This is the Nekudah, this is the source. In any case, um, not only do I believe that, I'm becoming more and more comfortable speaking about it because I feel and I'm, that we're not dealing with something that is going to be revealed in a very long time. Now again, I'm not telling anybody that you have to accept what I'm saying. It's not, a, it's not an obligation, it's not a mitzvah, it doesn't say explicitly you have to accept or you have to believe or you even have to identify Mashiach. There, there could be a benefit from then identifying Mashiach because then you can participate in actually crowning him, which it says the Yidn are going to do with Mashiach Tzidkein, or they're going to come to him and ask him, please be our king. For that, you'll have to identify someone. And the Rambam also gives you all the simanim because just in case you'll see a person that fits the bill, then we should follow Rabbi Akiva. Today's a day, and Rabbi Akiva recognized Mashiach. We should also do that. But I'm, but I'm not saying that you have to come to my conclusion. I'm just comfortable enough to be able to share this, even though there's been a time that people were very uncomfortable speaking about it after Gimel Thomas. But now, it's two things. First of all, I'm, I'm coming to a state, a state in my life that I care less and less and less what this one is going to say or that one is going to say, because I realize I just went through a virus. This virus, a global virus, an epidemic. Who's going to save me? I realize that when God, I'm becoming more and more clear to me that the millionaires that, I'm, that I, maybe I'm relying on that's going to support the center, they're going to do this. Today they can have money, tomorrow they, there's no one to rely on, only on the Ebersh there. Even for life and for money and for health. So what's the difference? Yankel's going to say, Moshe's going to say, Chaim Yacha, it's all, it's, it's all, it's all Narshke. Bottom line, be a real person. Is it real or is it not true? Is this the truth or is this not the truth? So, now, okay. If this is the case. So, but, but the Rebbe passed away, Gimel Thomas happened. So, 
for those that have been following earlier classes that I've given, and I've discussed this a lot, in 1990 and 1991 and 1992, especially in those two years, is where the Rebbe himself started revealing that he's Moshiach. He said amazing, amazing sikhs, and I'm not gonna go through it right now. But the Rebbe then, I'll give you one interesting description in Pasha Shoftim, both in 57, 52, and in 57, I'm sorry, 57, 52, and 57, 51, both Pasha, no, I'm sorry, Pasha's Mishpatim in both of them. So in Pasha, in 57, 51, the Rebbe says that the Hismanos, the, the Minoi, the, 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 the um, appointment of Mashiach, it happened already. That's what the Rebbe says. We finished saying the capital then, Matsasi David Avdi, the, the capital 89, where it says, I found David my servant. Beshem and Kachim Meshachtev, he's been already anointed. The Rebbe said, the minuif in David Malka Meshach Hashem Given, the only thing that's necessary now is the Yiskashrus between the Melech and the Am. That's the only thing that's necessary. And the Rebbe kept on pointing that year that since the, the, the war, the Persian, he, he was pointing to the fall of the communist as part of the messianic process and something that Mashiach himself is responsible for which is an incredible miracle. But in addition to that, the Rebbe also the Rebbe also, in addition to that, um, the Rebbe also uh, pointed to the, the war uh, with Saddam Hussein, the Gulf War, as, a, as something that the Medrash says is gonna happen the year that Mashiach is revealed. And the Rebbe never changed his mind because in the end of the year he didn't say, oh, I hope that would happen, it didn't happen, guys, we have to try. He was referring it to it as something that happened already. That it was fulfilled what the al said. So there is clear indication from him that that was the year that Melech HaMashiach was revealed. Then, however, we know, the Rebbe went to his father and had a, and over the, at the oil, and over there he had a stroke, which that stroke led to two years later, the Rebbe having another stroke on the very same day, Chavzai another. And then a half a year later, we had Gimel Tamuz, which this was the passing of the Rebbe. In the Zoyar, it says over here, that after Moshiach is born, now what does it mean Moshiach born? Does it mean a physical baby being born in this world? Or does it mean that the Moshiach's neshama is revealed in his body. He's already a person. Now, based on the Chassam Seifer, and on uh, that Mashiach, and the, and the Bartanur, and so on, the Mashiach is a tzaddik, that's alive in this world, that he himself, however, like the Chassam Seifer says in his Chuvas, the Mashiach himself doesn't know that he's Mashiach. Until the time comes, and it's revealed to him, and then they empower him. The, the Arizal also says this. They give him, open up to him, incredible, they attach to his neshama or reveal in his neshama much crazy, crazy godliness. That means the birth of Mashiach. If we can say the first birth. So that happened over that year. After that, it says after his birth, there's going to be a skalalos of Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. Which means we're not dealing with two separate people, or we're dealing with two separate people, but two separate people that converge and become one. Now again, I'm speculating. This is something that I can't say bevadai. No one knows this bevadai, because we're dealing with a spiritual element that I, I can't see, no one can see. But it makes sense based on so much. The previous Rebbe, his name is Yosef. Yosef Yitzchak. The Rebbe went to the oil, where the Friedrich Rebbe is, and over there he had the stroke, which eventually led. And then both of them are in, interned, if you can say, at least our physical bodies, at least to what we can see, okay? <laughs> There's a lot goes on that we don't see. Then any, 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 any half-decent person who studied anything knows there's a lot going on that we don't see. But what we see, so they're together. Is that this Indian of Iskalalos of Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben Dav? Now, by the way, there is a fellow by the name of uh, Rabbi Volpe, wrote a Sefer Yechia Melech HaMashiach. And over there, he wrote this already back then. He wrote it even before Gimel Tamas. 
And over there he has this long discussion on this concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David, proving the idea that the two of them converge into one person. It's fascinating. From many places, it's not, we're not dealing over here with two separate people that remain. And he, over there he has a long discussion on this concept that it can be two phases in the Rebbe's life, one of them as Mashiach ben Yosef and then evolving into Mashiach ben David, or this escalalus of the two of them together. So I think that follows what it says over here. After that, there's an Indian of Yomos, because the birth, after the birth, is what we, what we learn over here in the Mimer, Yarchayim Mitztananois. The, the thighs become cold, which means a certain detachment, which leads to an Indian of death. Again, there is an Escalalus, and the Escalalus could have happened on Chavzai and other, between the two. The passing is what the Zayar is referring to. And as the Tzemach Tzedek says, after the birth, he relates it to the idea that Mashiach is revealed, and then concealed, and then revealed again. And then comes the time for the... And somehow that's connected with 33 days. Now obviously 33 days is much longer passed since that, that time. Um, but it's connected to Lag Boimer. So that's where I am at with this, in terms of to uh, fit this in. Now, I want to add one more thing. Um, I'm realizing that this class is going to have to be stopped, and I'm going to continue this tomorrow. For one reason, I want to be able to give the, the, the deeper, more, to give meaning to all of this in a more understandable way, and for that I myself, can use some more preparation. I also finding myself getting a little confused, meaning a little, a little. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not lightheaded, but I'm getting very tired while I'm speaking. Part of the reason is we don't have a physical audience over here, and I'm talking to an empty room, even though I know there are those listening on YouTube. But I don't think I will have the strength to carry on for another hour and a half, probably the amount of time that I would need to be able to make some heads and tails and make some sense out of what I'm, of what I'm, what I would like to reveal and share about this. Um, but I do want to conclude with another idea that will make this very interesting related to our time. So what really got me excited, I thought that the subject is kind of over at this point. This is in the end of Sif Gimel in the Mimer. Then I decided to read a little further in Dalit, and I've completed it actually today, this was already yesterday, and it blew my mind because the Mimer goes on to speak the continuation of Bilam's words in that Pasuk. I'm sorry, um, from I see him at the top of hills and at the, uh, at the top of mountains, and, which is a Pasuk very much related, as we're going to see soon in tomorrow's class, to the birth of Mashiach. It continues, They are a nation that sits in isolation. Now, the globe, the entire world, went into isolation global social distancing. This feeling is a, a sense of bedidus, badad. It had a little bit of a Tisha B'a feeling. Tizzing on Tisha B'a we say, Echa Yadra B'a, and it was Pesach by night that everybody sat alone. And it's troublesome because it's, it's bothersome because Pesach we all want to be together. Opposite of Badad. Now it makes sense based on what I said earlier that the first night Pesach and Tisha B'av are related because in Tisha B'av, yeah, Badad alone. That's what Golas says. Bedidos, alone. And I've spoken already in, in earlier classes that Badad is associated definitely with the situation that's going on with the entire world. Everybody's locked up. This is, this is what do they call it? That was the other word. Uh, they have uh, social distancing. They have, uh, no... The, not the lockdown. No, my head is not with me right now. I told you I'm tired. Um, no. And even when people are outside on the street, everybody's alone. There's a mask, you can't see people's faces. You need to. Oh, quarantine. The great quarantine. And by Metzairah, which. Uh, uh, someone who has Metzairah, which is also related to Mashiach, Mashiach is called Tzaraz, what does it say? Badad Yeshev, he sits in isolation, in quarantine. 
So this very passage of Zohar, which is based on these psukim, continues to explain, and the, the mimer of the Alter Rebbe explains this whole concept of Bodad. Now, careful anal analysis of it brought me, again, it's, it, it, it's still vague in my head, and I don't have it fully out, why this is a necessary component for this whole concept of returning life into Malchus, it has to happen during a period of time when, 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 when Yidin, when the Jewish people are in a state of Bodad. We're not together, and we're not even together with Minyanim and so on and so forth. We're in a state of Bodad. But the state of Bodad has in it, as we're going to see, two things to it. Externally, it has the idea that we're distant from each other. We're not together, we're not unified, we're not in the way. Sadly, one of someone pointed out to me before we were talking, so someone had pointed out to me that sadly this whole virus hit the Jewish community very strong. I mean, disproportionately like in other places. A lot of religious Jews got sick, and a lot of them passed away. Jews in general, but I would say a lot of religious Jews. Observant Jews. It hit Jewish communities very strong. And the simple reason, without getting into mystical ideas of what, where, and when, everything is driven by much higher things on the simplest of level, we have a very hard time social distancing. We're very much the social community. We hang out with each other very much. And it has to do with a panemius to Indian about the Jewish people, is that we are an amechot, we're a people of oneness. The Indian of Pruda, in the, the, the other side, the unholy, is called Alma de Pruda. It's a world that's scattered. So it fits really well. Stay home, be isolated, be yourself, everybody onto your own. Jews, we cluster together. We've always held on to each other. That's been our strength. And in this virus, it ends up being a weakness. Because, because Jews could not listen to this, and they went to Minyan when they were told not to go to Minyan, and so on and so on, but we can't, we have to be. So we figured out how to manage and, and stem it. So the union of this bedidus causes isolation. But we're going to see in the, in the mimer what he explains over here is that this bedidus means you're going deeper into yourself and you're kind of moving away from external interaction. That's what it is. When everybody's set into quarantine, you're not interacting with the outside. We're all moving into an inner state. And we're going to see that's because of our energy flow. This is a fascinating concept. Our energy flow, which we represent, which is actually on, on some spiritual godly level, a level that's higher than Malchus. I'm, I'm just going to say quickly, which it's not going to be understood in today's class. The Ze'er Anpin, which is in charge of causing this higher life from Bina to go down into Malchus to help the new life in Moshiach Tzedkenu be revealed. So the facilitator of it all is called Yisrael, or is called Ze'er Anpin which manifests also in us, the Jewish people. We're playing, and we're going to see, we're playing a few roles in this. We're playing, obviously, the roles of the one who's being born, because our panemius is Mashiach Tzedkenu's neshama, and that part of us has not been born, so we're part of what needs to be born, and what died, and what's going to be resurrected, so to speak, what passed away, and what needs to be come back to life. We are on that end, but we're also playing the role of the, the husband of the Shekhinah, which is called HaKadosh Baruch and Yisrael, or Yidnar represent that entity. And we're here bringing from Bina down into Malchus, causing this, this joining together, this supernal unification of the higher energy to the lower energy, from mother to daughter, to bring that life force. In order for us to be able to do that, here's the thing, we need to go into a state of Badad. That's what he explains into the Maimar. We need to be... The, return into a state of inwardness, less interaction with the world, go deeper into our source, all the way up as we're going to see into Chachma and to Bina. Now, what happens in that state is that we melt into each other in a very, very deep way. We melt into each other in a very deep way. So that is an amazing thing because as we went inward, we became more unified. It's very interesting. We stepped away from each other externally 
from involving in each, with, with, with each other on an external physical basis of interaction. That happened. So we would think we would become less caring for each other, less involved. But we went in from the outside world and we went into the world of Zoom. We're interacting less with the physical outside world, but we're, act, we're interacting very much with each other. But not only that, anybody that's been a little bit tuned in to the inner workings in the Jewish people, but in especially the inner workings of Chabad, has noticed or has seen that there's a powerful surge of unity that was brought during this time. People that have been fighting with each other, couldn't get along with each other, on many levels, have unified. Because in the state of Badad, this inwardness brings us to a place where our differences are less pronounced, and we go deeper into a state of unity, and this is necessary for us to be able to facilitate this unity of the higher life force to the lower life force. So this really adds an, a, major, a major component of why in between this Pesach and this Lang Boimer, because people are asking me the question, okay, I get it, we needed to have this, this whole thing to happen, the whole world stopped, and this is all called Corona, which is crowning Hashem and all that, but why is it still going on? Why are we still in social isolation? When are we going back to normal? Okay, yeah, states are easing up. I think because we are reflecting God our inwardness causes supernally an inwardness to take place in the highest, by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that there's an inwardness in what's called Yisrael de la'ela, also detachment going into a higher place for the sake of bringing about this badad, as we're going to see another meaning in the word badad, it's amazing, in order to cause this fusion of re refusing Mashiach Tzedkenu with energy and life so that he can complete and bring the Giyola, Again, associated with the completion of that on Lag Boimer. And the purpose of that detachment, the, I'm just going to conclude with this. I want to make the outline today and tomorrow, I hope to give the, the substance. This is more the, the external picture. So why do we have to go into this Bedidus in order to facilitate that unity? The reason is, because we have to assure that there's no yanika sachitzonim. If you're infusing malchus with higher life, with higher energy, you're talking about Mashiach Tzedkenu, going to be receiving the highest dosages of godly power and light, there's always the problem, chas v'shalom, of yanika sachitzonim, which means negative forces using that energy, just like when Adam Arishon, once he ate from the tree of knowledge, he wasn't allowed to eat from the tree of life because he's gonna take, he's gonna have access to real potent energy and the snake is gonna get it because the snake has already, has already hacked him. It's like when a, person, a person's bank account, a person's been hacked, you don't wanna make a deposit of millions of dollars into your account because the hackers are gonna get it. So that's the concept of Yenika Sachit Tzaynim, see what that? So for whatever reason, because of that we need to be that's the reason of this withdrawal. And what that, is, that does is, it causes the, the, those that have been deriving energy from the Shechina until now, from Malchus, which is, what, what is the whole power of the exile and the Golas. The Golas comes from unwanted guest stealing energy from the Shechina, which has to end when Mashiach comes. No more unique son, the exile ends. That means that the chitzayinim, which means the 70 nations, the 70 powers of, have to lose their grip on the Shekhinah. That happens as a result of the withdrawal. Now take a look what's going on over here, spiritually. There's a global withdrawal, a global isolation. And we, the Jewish people, now it's, obviously it's affecting everybody. No one's going to bars, no one's going to games, no one's going to things. But we, the Jewish people, are not going to Minyan, but also are not interacting so much with the world. We're in a more enclosed state. As we go inward, and there's less, there's less Yenika Sachit from our Nishamis as well. And what happens? The economy goes Whoosh. Superpowers, an incredible strong country, think of the Arabs, the oil tanked. It's all connected. Because we're going to be in any moment when the life force is reconnected, it's going to flow to the right place. It's going to be directed to, to Mashiach Tzedkenu. 
And of course, the nations are going to be richer than they ever were before. But all under the control of Mashiach. Under the control of holiness. Where holiness dominates. You don't just take what you want and so on and so forth. So we've seen that there's so much that is just... The, the global economy is kind of tanking. While this is all taking place. So I think there are some magnificent secrets, powerful in Yonam, that are, that are happening right now, and that we get a little peek of what is going on when we, when we examine this from Panimi Yisatora. So Be'ezus Hashem, tomorrow I'm going to continue this, this, this class. It'll probably be tomorrow evening. And um, I am not going to repeat the, the concepts. Um, so if you want anybody to listen to tomorrow's class, please send them today's class so they can listen to it and we can jump right into the explanation instead of me having to repeat the whole thing over again. and then Because uh, I want to get right to part two. So we'll be able to hold the thought for now. Meanwhile, I hope that by tomorrow we don't have to discuss this anymore. And Mashiach Tzadkenu is fully revealed in front of our eyes and we have the complete geula and everything is totally behizgalos. May we merit to see it now. Afrelech and Freilech and Lagboimer to all.